Good. So what we are going to see this afternoon is two topics. The first is the progression of the design of the A Reales in Zacatecas from 1810 to 1813. And the second point is the presentation of the four reales of the War of Independence of, I mean, all the coins that we know exist and that were struck in this period. So let's start uh, here with, uh, with Zacatecas. Uh, you know, uh, Zacatecas already was approved to start a minting in uh, October 1810. So it was at the same time of Sombrerete, but they were slightly faster than they start coining at the end of November. And Sombrerete start coining at the beginning of December. So it was really two close meets that were uh, producing coins roughly at the same time. So let's start with, uh, with the Zacatecas and let's see what, uh, what we can see. So the coin of Zacatecas is the most prolific in the War of Independent period. It accounts, the A Reales accounts for roughly 47% of all coins that we can, find, we can find in the past 30 years of, of public and private auctions. So it means that Zacatecas itself roughly produced half of the coins that were circulating in, from 1810 to 1822. So also the coins from 1810 to 1813 were the most prolific in terms of designing. Uh, we are going to see in a minute that were some interesting coins. Ooh. And uh, also, uh, I mean, and the, and the 1810 and 1813 accounts for roughly 20% of all the coins A Reales produced in the mint of Zacatecas. And uh, these four years were really, really prolific with very interesting variations. Uh, and you will see. So this terms for you, let me uh, uh, repeat this. The pina means period uh, 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 index of numismatic availability. This is an index that has been designed to give uh, some direction of how the coins compare with the ones produced in the same year also, the MINA, that is the mint index, is intended to tell the, the coins how it compares with the ones produced in the mint. And in the, the, the GINA, that is the Y, the I, and A, is intended to tell you how they compare in the same year. So the period is with full period of, in, of independence, the um, MINA is in the mint, and the uh, GINA is for the year the coin was produced. We are going to see this in detail in a minute. So this is the first coin that, were, that was struck in Zacatecas in 1810. This is a, a coin that uh, you can see uh, in the obverse. They said uh, Ferdinandus uh, VII de Gratia. So, Fernando VII, por la gracia de Dios, mm -hmm. they have the denomination A Reales and the year 1810. So, in the reverse, they said Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas. Remember that these means were intended to produce coins only for a short period of time, only to resolve the <coughs> scarcity of uh, money that they need in order to continue the commercial activities to pay troops and to do everything. So the, in, the, in the verse, we have the, uh, the Spanish uh, uh, Fernando VII King Shield. I mean, this is a shield with the crown, with the two uh, Hercules uh, pillar, uh, uh, pillars, and also uh, a mimic 
of the uh, Castilla and Leon shield, you know, with, I, and I say mimic because they replace the lions with some, um, let's say, pomegranates, uh, flowers, they say, they say castles and flowers, but this is a castles and some pomegranates that this wanted to meet there. The other thing that they changed was the, 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 the three, um, the, the three uh, fleur de lis, that was the portable de lis, they replaced this with a point of, uh, a cross of points, and also the pomegranate that is here, they replaced it with a leaf, probably agave or probably some, uh, some other leaf, but it's very difficult to say. So, in the other part they have the, the two Zacatecas mountains that are the El Grillo y La Bufa, and also the cross that is intended for uh, the Christianity that is uh, very important in, in Spain and in Mexico for those days and in Spain as well. Also, we have the letters, the LVO, that uh, uh, this means Laboru Pinchit Omniake, that is part of uh, the, the Zacatecas uh, uh, shield, that it means with the job you can do everything or you can overcome everything, every hurdle, or you can do everything with job or, or with work, working. So, in this case, this is the first coin in 1810, and you can see here that um, we found three, three kind of obers and four kind of reverses. This is uh, what we found in, uh, in the past 30 years, in the, the coins that uh, were um, available for purchasing in auctions. So this was the first coin. So let's see uh, what, what happened with this first coin. You can see here that we have a transitional issue from 1810 to 1811. They share the same die for the reverse, but they change the reverse and they change the date. So, but this is the same, the same design. So there were not much changes between 1810 and 1811, this is what we call the first series because you can see the shield still bears the pomegranate uh, trees or pomegranate flowers and also the agave. Uh, so is uh, is a minor change in the design. In this uh, app, uh, something important, something important here. You see this mina or M here is 0.81%. It means that almost you need to see 120 coins of eight reales from Zacatecas in order to see one coin from 1810 uh, in Zacatecas. So this means that it's really a very scarce coin. I mean, it's uh, quite, quite rare. In the second one, sorry here. The second, you have uh, this one in the 11, it has a mean of 2%. It means that every, let's say, 100 coins, you can find two that are from 1810 in the first period. Yes? So the Fina, Vina, and Gina, those are in reference to observed coins in the current day. That's right, yes, because we don't have data to tell how many coins are nobody surviving or are available in public or private hands, but we can say how many times some of the coins were available to be acquired in the past 30 years. So this is this, the intention of this is provide some direction of how common or rare is the possibility to acquire some of these coins. So, <coughs> in, the, in the second uh, part is the second type of the LVO. Here you can see that uh, there is a change in the 
uh, au pairs, and they finally make the proper shield of Fernando VII. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. For this second type of 11, 11, sorry, 1811. In this case, this coin that is in the transition is what we call a transitional coin because in the reverse, they still keep the same design that they have in 1811 first type. So this is also a very scarce coin, it's very transitional, only 3% of all coins of 1811 are transitional. It means that you need to see 100 coins of 1811 to see three that are transitional. Mm. So really scarce as well. And here you can see the proper coin of the second type. That you see their pair a different reverse that say moneda provisional around the, the 12, if we imagine that is a clock, around the 12 is moneda provisional de Zacatecas. And also they pair the proper shield of Fernando VII. So in this case, for the second type, we have accounted 22 overs and 16 reverses and a lot of marriage of them because this changed a lot. So it means that is quite common coins. You can see that they have a mina of 7.66%. It means that in the whole coins produced in Zacatecas in every year of eight reales from 1810 to 1822, 7.2% of these coins, 7.6% of these coins are second type like this. So this is a more common coin. So when they finished this transitional type, they needed to start producing coins that were similar of the ones that were produced in Mexico. So remember in Mexico, for those days, in 2011, they were producing some coins of the boost of Fernando VII that some of them were invented, were, uh, were not the proper. And at the end of 2010, they had the proper boost. So in 2010, they have the armor boost and they have the neck boost or the cuerras boost. But in uh, Zacatecas, they continue doing this shield for 20, for 1811. So, but and at the end of the year, we are going to see a more graphic picture at the end of this uh, series for you to recap what we have shown here and, and showing one picture of what it is. Uh, they need to change that and show the boost of Fernando VII. So what they, what they did here is they kept the shield, you can see here, in, in the coin of, uh, that depicts the boost of Fernando VII. And they change the El Grillo y la Bufa and LVO for the boost of Fernando VII, and they kept the legends. Look at this, Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas, here as well, Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas, and they change uh, Fernando uh, VII de Gretia, and they have here, Fernando VII, eight reales de gratia. They also changed the position of the denomination from the lower left part to the upper right part. And basically that was a major change in the coin art, coinage of Zacatecas. This coin represents 1.93% of the mina. It means that boost of Fernando VII, 1811, is quite a scarce coin. Only 2% of all coin produced in Zacatecas from 1810 to 18, 1822, only 2% are coins with the boost of Fernando VII, 1811. 
but this is the only one that we were able to find in 1810. This armor boost and this kind of, of, of boost. It means that it was late in 1811 when they made this change. So the first change from the uh, uh, type one and the type two, it was early 1811. And the change from the second type to the boost, it was late in 1811. Is that bust? from Mexico City, is that the same imaginary or it's similar but different? It's, it's similar but it's completely <laughs> different yeah. design. It means that they don't use the, the, the madre, the cuño madre in order to, to make the dice. I mean, they, all of these were doing by hand, basically. But they have the model Very of simple. the coin of Mexico. But they don't use the, they didn't use the matrix. So this is a recap of 1811. So you can see here the first type, second type, and the boost, everything in the first, uh, in this year, 1811. So and here you have the differences of how scarce are the coins. This one is 17% and this one is 17% as well. It means that LVO 1811 and the boost of 1811 are quite the same in terms of scarcity and rarity. Now let's get in 1812. The only thing that changed here was the date. That 1812, rather than 1811, they changed 1812, they improve the design of the boost, as you can see, is not so rough. It's more, uh, has more style, let's say. But uh, the rest of the coin is exactly the same. Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas, Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas, uh, Fernando uh, Septimo, Ocho Reales de Gratia, 1811. Fernando Septimo, Ocho Reales de Gratia, 1812. So, this coin of the 12 has a mint index of 4.7. So both coins producing Zacatecas from 1810 to 1822, 4% of every 100 coins, you can find four, roughly five, of 1812. And this armor boost that you see this in the first time accounts for 82% of the coins manufactured in 1812. So it means that in this year is the most popular coin, let's say. Now that we are seeing 1812, at the end of 1812, they made the change for the naked boost that were in use in 1811 in Mexico, at the end of 1811. Now, at the end of 1812, they decide to change the boost from armored boost to queras boost, for na naked boost. So, if you see, the boost is completely different, and they change the overs, they change the die, but they continue using the older, the older reverse dies. How we know that? Because when they try to mimic the coin from Mexico, they put all the legends, but they miss the denomination. You see the coin here didn't have the denomination. You suppose that this coin, as in Mexico, is going to have the denomination in this part in the other side, but they, because these this have the legend of Moneda Provisional de Zacatecas, they don't have the denomination in the reverse, they don't have even in the overse. So it means that these coins didn't have denomination. Mm. And it was quite a mistake because they use the new overse with the old reverse. Mm. So this coin is quite rare in general, the coins that has the naked boost of Provisional de Zacatecas are rare coin, coins, only accounts for 2% of all coins 
produced in the year 1812 in Zacatecas. So you need to see 50 coins of 1812 to see one of naked boost. So we can say in this way, is 50 times scarcer than the one with the uh, armor boost. Mm -hmm. So this coin is uh, really rare. It's a transitional and they live for a very short period of time because they very quickly realize that they need to change the overs, the diet overs, and in the new one, they put moneda provisional de Zacatecas and they add the A reales. So they, they fix the situation and they have this new coin. That, by the way, this new coin is also a rare coin as well because it was at the end of 1812. And from this coin, they change to 1813, that is the final design that went through 1822 in the final uh, series of Zacatecas. And they change completely the reverse, rather than moneda provisional de Zacatecas, is saying hispaniarum e indiarum rex, ocho reales, uh, and the name of the assailer, that in this case is Francisco Peña, that is the, F the FP, and is the first time in 1813 that the coins in Zacatecas start showing the initials of the assailer. That is the first time. This, that's the reason I'm stopping here because the rest of the coins are similar. The only difference are the changes that they have in the initial of the assailers depending on the year. Mm. But you can see this is the flow of this coin from 1810 to 1813. Let me show you, this is a, an interesting picture because this recap of what we have seen with some additional things. You see, from 1810 to 1813, this is the cadence, you see we can see four periods. The first period are the first type, let's say, of shield what they call the local type. The second period is the second type of uh, the LDOs. The third period is la moneda provisional de Zacatecas with the boost of uh, uh, Fernando VII. And the fourth period is the one uh, with the final design. Here you can see what is the timeline for these changes. So. The mint start producing in November. In February, they changed to 11, to 1811. In September, they changed to the boost that went through March that they start having this final design that went through 1822. <coughs> but good thing to say is that in this period, the coins of uh, LVO uh, uh, has the, the, the first type, they have 12 dineros. This means that it's pure silver, 99.96% silver. And if, if you do the uh, X-ray RF, you can testify that these coins are huge amount of silver. And in fact, these coins were so good that they melt massively, massively because of the amount of silver. And in many places, they received the coins for nine reales because of the purity of the silver and because of the weight. It's a full ounce, full ounce of, of silver. This is what, what they produce in, in Zacatecas. So then when they made the change to the second type, they decreased the amount of silver to 10 dineros, yeah? and they kept the weight in order to keep the confidence in the coin. Then in the third period, they kept the same dineros, but they decreased the weight of the coin to 2685 grams. So it's the same of 15 adarmes, that it was uh, a weight measure. 
that is uh, one alarme is 1.79 grams. What is the same is one sixteenth of an ounce. So they were making this change progressively in order to decrease the purity of the silver and also decreasing the weight of the coins. And then in the fourth period that was the last, they adopted the same uh, uh, weight and fineness of uh, the silver that they have in Mexico for the 11 dineros, um, around 11 dineros. And then after the, the Republic, they changed this to 10 dineros and uh, mm. 20 uh, granos. No? You know that one dinero is equal to 24 granos. No? So this is probably, this is the, if you want to remember something of this presentation, probably this is the slide that you should remember because you have everything, the cadence of the, of the coins there. So any questions about uh, Zacatecas? So two questions. These are all silver. And the, the, uh, you had mentioned that the, in the fourth period, they uh, started to put the assay, the uh, initials of the assayer. Did they also at that point also put, uh, I know the coin is, uh, the legend of the coin is Zacatecas. Did they actually uh, put in the mint mark as well? Sure. You can see that um, here they have the mint mark of Zacatecas. They have Ispan et ind rex, the Z of Zacatecas, the A reales, and the Asaya. Yes. Question. Yep. Why 28.7 grams if no eight reales for 200 years have been that heavy? Why did they decide to go way heavy on the coin? Because they knew that this was going to be the first time people were going to see this coin. And they wanted to be sure that the coin was fully accepted by the people. And the problem was not the availability of silver. They have a significant amount of, uh, of silver there. The problem was for them how to produce sure. and how to sure. make this silver available for the, for the market. So it's like a bonus gram. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk about the second topic is the cuatro reales of the war of independence cuatro reales is a very interesting uh, minor but especially in the period of independence because usually this coin is between non-used and <coughs> is a coin that can be used for savings let's say people used to say in uh, in reales of eight in large pieces of, or in gold. But the four reales was a, a coin that really were not very common that circulate around. So, so uh, me, uh, uh, most of the, of the, of the mints didn't want to produce this coin. So, but nevertheless, these four mints produce uh, these coins in this period. They were produced between 1811 and 1817. And I'm going to explain this word. So first, let's say that in the study that we did of all the coins from independence in the past 30 years in the auctions, in uh, uh, almost 4,700 coins that we surveyed, basically only 147 were four reales. Mm. So you can see that this is really only 3% of all the coins that were available for the period of independence. This is a scarce coin, and some of them really, really rare. Here in the graphic, you can see that is uh, four reales is only this piece, if you want to see this graphically, what it means, 3%. In terms of the mints, in these four reales, most of, the, of these coins came from Guadalajara, and a little bit came from Durango and from Sombrerete. So, but you can see that that, that uh, were really, really a few coins, but the more popular, let's say, in the period are the Guadalajaras. We are going to see them in a minute. 
We are going to start with Sombrerete because we're the ones who start minting for reales in 1811. They, uh, uh, this mint start, as I mentioned before, one month after Zacatecas in December of 1810. And they start producing the coins of four reales only in 2011 and probably at the end of 2011 because only a few coins of um, 1811 survives. And in fact, they have a fall in the, in the die that really made this coin with a short period of time. Uh, only uh, we have seen four coins of this. I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. These coins portray the, um, the shield of Fernando VII, and what they say is Real Caxa de Sombrete. Not even Sombrerete, they have the contraction for Sombrete. And in the, uh, the denomination that is Four Reales, and in the other side they have Vargas, that is the name of Vargas Machuca, who was, who was the assayer and the one who was in charge of the mint when they opened, the number three, that is the number assigned by the viceroy to him as a, as a minter, that uh, in this, he, I, he has the number three. They were a number one, two, three, four, five. So he's one, the number three. And we have the two uh, shields. One is uh, the two pillars of Hercules with a crown with an S inside, that it means that the silver already pay the caja the sombrerete for the coinage, and the other one has an S also between two Hercules pillars with a head that is crowned. Uh, in this case, the head is looking to the left, sorry, uh, it's looking to the uh, yeah, left in this side, and, uh, and, and in this case is a really bad scene, but if you see a coin that is well struck, you can see that is a, is a head, and represent the head of the king, and it means that has been already paid the one-fifth that you need to pay to the king in order when, when you make the coins. And also they have in the center the year. So, but you can see the die here has a really bad flow, and uh, the date is not clear in any coin, and I'm going to show you uh, some of them. This is the four coins that we have seen. As, as you can see, all of them has problem to see, to show the date. In some of them, only the last one survived, in the first one in all of them, but only the last one in a few of them. And by the way, most of them are different. So this is quite interesting. This is a, a good uh, specimen for study of what happened with these coins. But nevertheless, it was the first uh, four uh, reales uh, mint in the War of Independence. And this coin uh, already passed to the 1812 that they kept the same design, but the only thing they changed was the final digit of the date, but they, re they redo, they made a new die for the obverse. The reverse kept the same bar of dies. So it means because all these coins were done with hammer, it means that probably the other ones were destroyed really soon. They realized that they didn't uh, depict the, the date clearly. So they redo the obverse and they keep hammering and they produce this second coin in 1812. The 1812 accounts for nine out of 10 coins made in Sombrerete of Four Reales. So in other words, the 1811 is a really rare coin. The 1812 is more common. In the scarcity, I show you at the beginning that these coins are not often oftenly seen, but in this scarcity, the 1811 is much scarce. scarce. Also, I, uh, we can show that in in uh, 1811, they start uh, using the collarina uh, in order to make the, uh, the edge of the coins. So only two years in Sobrerete, 11 and 12. 
Now let's talk about Tlalpujahua. Tlalpujahua was the second mint producing uh, coins of four reals. And they produced this in 1813. Uh, but let, let me make an introduction. In, 18, uh, in 1811, there is a letter from Ignacio Lopez Rayon. Uh, uh, it, it was not a letter, it was a, a band saying that they, uh, they are forming with Jose Maria Liceaga and other people that they were creating the Suprema Junta Gubernativa de America. And in a letter that they sent to Morelos, they are saying, we are going to produce some coins. But this letter is signed in Sitacuar. It was uh, probably in September of 1811. And in January in 1812, they sent another letter to Morelos saying, we are going to start producing more coins now. And they more clearly explain what are the features of this new coin. And I'm going to explain in a minute. So this is to explain that in Sitacuaro, la Suprema Junta already start making coins in 1811 of this type, that is uh, cast coins, and also some struck coins in Cooper. And they were uh, probably made at the end of 1811 and at the beginning of 1812, because in 18 13, I mean, in 1812, they produced a lot of coins with the Suprema Junta in the type that I'm going to show you in a minute, the four reales, but only in 1813, they made the four reales, that is this one. This is the four reales of Suprema Junta, made in 1813, they only made in this year, we haven't seen or a coin from uh, 1812 of four reales in Suprema Junta. And this coin, what they said is, Vice uh, 13, Septimo, De Gratia, et, 1813, in the obverse. And in the reverse, they say, uh, SP, we assume this Supremo, Congreso uh, uh, Nacional de las Indias, Gubernative or Gubernativo, they have a T, and probably this coin was meaning Tlalpujahua, where this letter that they sent in uh, February of 1812 was instructed to Morelos, and they start minting in 1812 coins from uh, half, one, two, and eight reales. They didn't manufacture four reales in 1812, or at least we don't know about it. So, and they say, they also have here the four reales, the denomination that in, in this case is a little bit fuzzy, and they have another letter that is the S and M. And in some cases, this S and M has a royal, a crown, a circle on top. Mm. Um, this is the only coin that we know of four reales that has been minted by the, by the insurgents. Mm. The only coin, this one, for reales mean by insurgents. All other coins were counterstamped. For example, they took coins from Mexico, they cast them and they counterstamped with different uh, uh, punches, but the only coin that was struck uh, were this one that I'm showing you right now. This is a really rare and scarce coin. I mean, this is really, really rare coin. I love it because this is big, the Raptor, that is one of the initial designs of the Mexican emblems over a bridge. And also in the other side, they have the arrow, the, uh, the cue, the, the, the hand, and also the... Sling. How would say the... Sling. The sling, right. So this is for 18... 13. Then we go to Guadalajara, that is a very common coins. I mean, we can see this very often. Guadalajara uh, uh, received the approval to start minting coins in 1811, but because they have a mess, uh, they have a problems in the 
in the in the mint, they only start producing coins in 1812. But four reales only in 1814 and 1815. This is the cadence of boost that we see for 1814 that are the more common. We know that this coin was the first boost for 18, uh, 1814. And we know that because, I'm going to show you in a minute why, and we know that this boost was the last one because it was used also in 1815. In the middle, we only guess what is the order of this, uh, of this boost, but some of them are large, some of them are small, some of them has uh, fruits in the, in the crown, etc. I said that it was the first boost of 1814 because these coins are the only one who has something interesting is in the edge, they portrait the same design of the A reales of 1812. Mm. So apparently, they still have this collarina, uh, and they put the coins there, and they made the the edge with this uh, with this uh, portrait. All other coin has the colonial edge that is quite common, but mm. this one is the only one who has this that we call squares and flowers. You can see here the flower or crosses, if you want to say in this way, in this way as well. So, and then we have of the 15, that is a normal coin. <clears throat> this uh, of the 15 accounts around for, uh, let's say half of the, of the coins that we can have of four reales, but uh, they have less variety in terms of boost. Only uh, one or two boosts are um, available in 1815, but they kept the same designs. Now we are going to see what happened with Durango. Durango uh, started uh, receiving the permission to uh, coin, uh, uh, making coinage in May uh, 1811. And they produced only a few coins of 1811 uh, uh, one of uh, two reales saying moneda provisional de Durango that is quite scarce um, and uh, a few a reales with uh, interesting design that is more similar of what we was uh, for those days done, done in, uh, in Mexico uh, but uh, they portrayed a D with a, with a circle on top of the of the of the identification of the mint. But um, they only produce a few coins. It means that they produce only late, late 2018 start manufacturing of the coin. Most of the coins that we are seeing in Durango start in 1812. But they only produce four reales in 1816 and 1817, only in these two dates. So we can see this coin of four reales of Durango of 1816. Interestingly, they say 13 septimo de gratia, and in the other side they have Hispaniarum et Indiarum Rex, similar to what we have in Mexico City, uh, the denomination of four reales, and the assire that is a, a Mariano Saldivar. So, this coin progresses to this uh, another die of the overs, and they made a mistake. Rather than say gratia, they clearly say graita. This is a mistake done in the second die of this year, um, 1816. You can say, hey, how do you know it was the second die? And we can say, because in 2017, they used the same die, they made a correction over the 16, and they do the 7 of 17, and kept the same die because it's graita as well. So 
I don't know if they were unaware of the mistake in the legend, or simply put, it was so difficult to make new dyes that they didn't care and they continued using this in 1817. So, but it's interesting because um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very uncommon that they translate the problems from one year to another and they use extensively all the dyes. And then what they did is this uh, 1817 uh, probably was broken and they built a new overse with the right uh, with the right legend. So this is the four coins that we saw uh, one minute ago. And you see the cadence of the coins. You see they start with the right legend, Gratia. They made the wrong one with Graita. They used this in the 17 and they built a new one Gratia for the 17. So it means what I have just shown you is that in the War of Independence, Sombrerete manufactured 1811 and 1812. Tlalpujawa or Suprema Junta, 1813. Guadalajara, 1814 and 1815. And Durango, 1816 and 1817. So, no, there were not two means producing four reales in the same year. I don't know if this is by chance or they agree that, but it's very rare that this situation happened, but this is what we have found in this study that we have done so far. So. That's my presentation. I don't know if you have any question, but I don't want to uh, keep you uh, hungry here on this. So let me know if you have any questions. In, uh, in the beginning there, when they were changing the purity of silver, was it, you think it was strictly a monetary thing or the strength and durability you have any issue there? Or? Because an alloy usually, you know, would, uh, would the last one would be a type of rock. Uh, do you mean in terms of the quality of the dyes? <laughs> well, no, the, the purity of the silver. Is oh. the type of um, I think that they were uh, trying to follow uh, different directions. One is the need that they have at the beginning to use pure silver, but uh, at the end, when they start uh, doing the coins in a more permanent way, because remember at the beginning it was provisional, and they start doing this uh, uh, in a more consistent way, they need to mimic or to be aligned with the main mint that it was Mexico. So, and they use the same kind of, uh, of purity of the silver in Mexico, the same one. <laughs> okay. That, that one four rails, it's unique from the Suprema. Do you, do you know how much it sold for? Which one? Uh, the 1813? Yeah, the four rails, it's beautiful. Uh, unique. And right there. In fact, I didn't see this coin in, the, in, in any auction. I mean, it was part of a private collection. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what is the what cost now of this coin. Market, so yeah. Okay, thank you very much and have a great day.